Good evening. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Uh, we're, we are launching our Bible study tonight. I don't know how many weeks, how many Wednesdays Brother Jimmy's going to spend teaching on the uh, Islamic religion. Uh, but I do know tonight he's just kind of uh, going to do some introductory to it. And so there will be a lot more stuff made um, uh, or coming after tonight that's going to be as we get deeper into it. And we're glad you came. Hope that it, it's something that helps you uh, to understand what we in America are facing and what's going on around us. And uh, a lot of people are just like, well, welcome, you know. And so hopefully you'll understand why this is a, a prayer matter and something that we should be in prayer about. Uh, and we're going to pray. We're not doing, uh, on these Wednesday nights Bible study, we're not doing uh, song service. We're doing prayer service instead. And uh, we're going to be praying tonight with several different people. Uh, Sister Carla had actually had a tooth pulled, and but in the, in the process of the tooth breaking, uh, she broke out a shingle. And Brother Doug, I, I think, said it went down around her nose now and uh, from her eye. Uh, then I got a call this afternoon, Sister Whitney Campbell passed out at work. They took her to the hospital in Clarksville. Uh, we've been praying for her, and we need to hold her up tonight. And, uh, you know, Mary Lou, they opened her back up and uh, cleaned uh, that infection out. Let's continue to pray for her. And um, yeah, Brother and Sister Ray, we will continue to remember them. All right, this is Lord Day, Brother Butch. Uh, we need to remember him. He had a, a stress test Monday morning. Sister Betty Adams' mother. And Sister Rhonda. All right, well, let's remember the Emerson family. Many of you from the Hector area would know them. Let's remember that family. Saw her family today while we were there. Sister Tammy. All right. Remember this, Joseph. His ears and her migraine. Sister Juan. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's why we keep praying and don't give up. Amen. Because God can turn things. You know, if you say, well, doctor made a mistake, that's a possibility. But folks, if, we, if they make that many mistakes, why don't we keep going to them? Uh, you know, I, there are just times when they, they had the right call and God intervened. Yeah. Amen. And, and so we just praise God for that. Ruby, yes. <clears throat> yeah. Let's remember this. All righty. Anybody else, sister? Sister Emily's stepdad. Lake and Stanick needs her prayers. Put her in the hospital. Yes. Amy's sick. Okay. Wow. All right. And then we got Brother Kaiser uh, been down. Here's here, here's what we're gonna do, and I'm, if you got a prayer request, we'll go ahead and let you give it in just a second. But 
Sister Wendy was very fortunate I didn't grab her head. Usually that's about the kind of people that I rough up, somebody I don't need to touch. But she, her neck, I'm gonna have her to come. And I'm saying this because we're not gonna shake her in the old time Pentecostal fashion. But we will lay hands gently on her in the name of the Lord, anointing with oil. And um, for your, you and your migraine, um, <clears throat> Sister uh, Brittany, anybody else in here tonight, because we're going to do two things on these Wednesday nights. We're going to pray, and we're going we're gonna to have Bible study. And uh, I believe that God, we've already heard <clears throat> Sister Lonnie's praise report for her, her sister. And uh, I'm telling you, God is not moved by everything we've heard tonight. Uh, he's still on the throne. He's still saying, trust me, call on me. He's, he's still saying, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be open unto you. Well, even though these things can be uh, disturbing, discouraging, yet we have faith that God, amen, is on the throne. So tonight we're going to pray. Brother Ray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's Sister Pat. Yeah. yeah. All right, Gary Jacob. Praise God. <laughs> Woo. Amen. God did some things Sunday morning. Was it Sunday morning or Sunday night? I don't remember which service we had the prayer line, but God was here doing some things. God knows, and God knows the need. One, uh, I got a call this afternoon um, from Sister Emmeline Tennyson and her grandson, Kels, uh, which is married to Sister uh, Juanita and Sister Ruby's niece. Um, they, I think he had a, a ruptured appendix or something other. The infections got in there. They've hospitalized him, and his organs are, uh, from what I understand, trying to shut down or something. Is that right? And, his, and this is uh, Kels Tennyson. And this is a young guy, probably late 20s. And uh, so a lot of urgent needs tonight. We've heard the Emerson family uh, lost that loved one, others. Uh, if you're sick in this building tonight, there's no need of you going home sick. Uh, won't you come? Won't you, if you can't stand, come up here and sit on the front seat. Brother Jimmy will give that place up and, and if, if we have to all sit, if you have to sit on the altar, whatever, we're going to anoint you with oil. We're going to pray the prayer of faith. The Bible says that the Lord will lift you up. Now, that's a great thing. And what I like about that is because sometimes I get to thinking about the failure of people, you know, our weakness, uh, <clears throat> you know, or, or whatever. Then I could say, well, you know, I may not have a lot of hope. But when it says the Lord is the one that's going to lift us up, I've got great hope. Amen. Because I know that it's out of man's hands, it's in God's hand. So tonight, if, you, if you've got an affliction tonight, a need, won't you come up here? We're going to take a little time to pray tonight. And we specifically want to pray for you. Then we'll, we'll pray for every, all these other needs. But if you want to come, come right now. Amen. And, and we're just going to anoint you with oil. Uh, you can be the, the next praise report that this church hears. Amen. Sister Wendy, a lot of pain tonight, but God's on the throne. Amen. And uh, so, anybody else? Listen, I'm going to tell you, and I'm not trying to <clears throat> beg you. I'm not going to beg you, but I heard two people say Sunday night they got healed in this, in this, in this church house through prayer of the people. And if you sit here tonight sick, 
too embarrassed or, or whatever, uh, man, it, th that'd be pitiful for you to go home. <laughs> well, I shamed them into it. Well, I tell you, whatever it takes. Amen. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, we, we've got some needs in this church that needs to be addressed uh, through prayer. All right. Tiffany's coming. Brother Joe. Amen. We never are ready to lose a loved one or give them up. But I tell you, and, and same testimony in my life, to, to, to witness a, a saint of God leave this earth is a precious thing when you see the grace of God working. Amen. It is. All right, we're going to pray for these, and we're going to anoint them with oil. Just going to start down on the end. I'll come down through. And... Uh, Could we just take every one of these needs tonight? Lord, that's been requested in this house. God, from those that have lost loved ones. God, from these young people tonight that's hospitalized. We pray, Lord, for Lake and Stanick tonight. Lord, and for Whitney. We pray tonight, God, that you'd move. 
Lord, upon the needs tonight, God. Those that are battling with cancer, Lord, we ask that you'd move. That, that lady in Texas, kiss to Kelly Hendricks, Lord, tonight. God, others, Lord, that we know, Brother Ray, tonight, God. Others tonight, Lord, that are, are, are moving forward, battling, Lord. They're on the front lines, Lord, and believing you tonight, God. Have, Lord, to move. I pray that you touch Sister Pat Owens' son-in-law tonight, God. Moving Gary's back have, with a mighty healing tonight, God. Have, oh, Lord, touch him, God. Raise him up. Let him be able to work provide for his family. Uh, those things, God, that are needed. Uh, we pray for the Emerson family tonight, God, that you'll comfort them in this time. Uh, God, that you'll move upon each one of these children, Lord, and give them comfort during this hour. God, I pray that tonight, Lord, uh, you will graciously move. Uh, Lord, on Sister Emily's stepdad tonight, Lord, uh, take him through, God, these surgeries, Lord, moving his life, God, uh, most of all in his spirit and in his heart. Oh God, may you be found. We pray tonight, Lord, God, for those in this house, God, that have come, Lord, tonight, confessing their faith in you as the healer of their bodies. God, we give you praise for it, honor and glory tonight for all things in Christ Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God's good, ain't he? Amen. All the time. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I've seen that. That's an awesome testimony. Our usher's going to come. We're going to receive our missions offering. And uh, this is this our this is our first offering of the year, I believe. Amen. This year we provided coats and shoes to a lot of kids, and we appreciate you giving. Amen. Brother Ralph, would you pray tonight? Amen. While they're receiving the offer, Brother Jimmy's getting ready to come. Let me quickly make some announcements. Church pictures of your family for the pictorial directory. Uh, we'll take a snapshot of your family Sunday. Sign up on the bulletin board. If you already have pictures, email them or bring them on a flash drive. If you're over 50, you may not know what an email or a flash drive are. You can ask Sister Lawana. Because I, I wouldn't know how to get that here to you. This, this coming Sunday night is our annual church business meeting. We'll open with prayer, and then we'll go into a business session. And uh, so that's this coming Sunday night. Uh, we invite everybody, and we expect the members. <laughs> I didn't, it sounded a lot funnier than that over on the church side. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, the 12th is going to be Tuesday night uh, ladies' Bible study. 17th is going to be a ladies' luncheon. That's uh, after the AM service, $3. We'll uh, get you, 
I guess, a lunch, ladies. Marriage retreat is March the 3rd through the 5th. You need to mark your calendars for that. Deposit is due by February the 14th of $25. Brother Keith and Sister Jackie Underhill are going to be our retreat speakers this year. So, Somebody say who? Oh, Jack Keith and Jackie Underhill. Brother Keith's sister goes to church here. So don't say nothing about him right now. <laughs> okay, I'm just... I'm just kidding. Amen. Uh, Sister Kim would have laughed at that. Amen. Brother Jimmy's coming. Amen. Amen. We're ready. Let me take this book. I'm going to adjust that. Something's happening. Something's happening. I believe. Can y'all hear me? Some can, some can. Raise your hand if you can hear me good. Oh, we're in trouble. But he's going to fix it for us. And he's running ever so fast back there. <laughs> All right, testing, testing. Test, test, testing. Is that better? Can you hear me a little bit now? Mm -hmm. All right. Got one more announcement that I had hit on my notebook that he didn't say. How many of y'all got a... a a kid that goes to a youth group here. Anybody? Raise your hand. Anybody? This announcement's for you. And uh, it's going to be important. We need to get the word out for it. They've changed the way we do church camp, youth camp again. January the 31st is the last Sunday uh, that you'll have an opportunity to get your money in and make your decision to youth camp or not. For years and years, you've been able to just kind of flip-flop back and forth. It ain't going to be so this year. And they're cutting it down from five camps to four camps. So it's going to be important that we're right on the spot. $50 is due on January the 31st. And she'll be making the call. That The youth are responsible for that $50. She said they'd fundraise everything else up to that up to the camp. And so, but, and, and if you ain't, if, if you know about youth camp, you know that's going to be pushing it. We've never had to have anything in that quick, but we're going to have to this year. Their rules, their camp, and uh, so um, just letting you know it'll be easy slept out of your mind, but it'll be up on us, and, and you really need to have that decision made, set vacation time uh, aside or whatever you're going to need to do for that, but anyway... Okay, so uh, that information is already on the bulletin, but uh, please uh, familiarize yourself with that, get ready to make that decision, and uh, go ahead and make that decision to go. I, I suggest you make that decision and send your kids to youth camp. <coughs> Amen. I've watched a lot of awesome things happen down at church camp when I can keep my eyes open while I'm there. Mm -hmm. Amen, because it's pretty tiring. Come on, smile. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we're going to talk about Islam tonight, and he keeps calling it a Bible study. I, I beg to differ. It might be a Quran study. For for uh, at least a couple of weeks, we're going to talk about Islam, and it's going to be interesting. I want to start the whole thing off with an article from uh, Fox News. Brother Arnold mentioned this uh, a few days ago. Illinois Christian College seeks to fire professor for comments on Islam. Officials at Chicago Christian College said Tuesday they're moving forward with firing a professor who was placed on leave after asserting that Christians and Muslims worship the same God. Well, that'll catch you in a minute. That's a big issue. Uh, if you're in here tonight, look at me right now because you need to know this. We do not serve the same God. And, and if you don't know that and understand that, this is a good reason why we should be going to Sunday school and going to Bible studies because whenever you agree with somebody out in this world and you say, well, yeah, we're, we're, what you're in essence saying at that point is we're brothers, we're sisters. 
And it seems like a good cozy feeling to be brothers and sisters of everybody, but we it can't be that way. And and I don't want to dive right into the middle, but let me just say this. If that's correct, then Jesus Christ was a liar. Islamic terms and guess what it wasn't found and so I'm going to slaughter them tonight probably uh, as as I tried to but but she was wearing the the, the scarf and there's a name for that and uh, and she was telling the students that that Muslims and Christians serve the same God and that she was trying to embrace Muslims well we can embrace Muslims but we got to em embrace them. We could show them love, but we got to embrace them and let them know the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You can embrace a lot of folks. And, and uh, Brother Arnold uh, is allowing me to teach on Islam, and I think we're going to switch right from Islam to other things, probably going to be a comparative religions class on Wednesday nights for a little while. We're going to talk about some other stuff. And, 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 and so there's some other religions out there that are just as scary Amen. Uh, as as the Islam religion, okay. So uh, let me let me say this before I get too far and lose all track of time. We're not going to be able to have an open format and just shoot questions and answers back and forth. We we would just lose track of time. We would never get nowhere. But what I'd like for you to do is, if you have a question that you'd like to be dealt with. If you can get me that question, you can text it to me, write it down and hand it to me. I'll study on it, and we'll try to deal with that sometime during teaching. I, I think that will be the best way uh, to handle that. So let's go about it like that, and you can write down stuff. You brought notebooks, and these guys are going to hand you out. If you all can hurry up and do that for me, I forgot I'd already had you doing that. They're going to hand you out a list of uh, Islamic terms and the definitions and there's only 35 guys, so you're probably going to have to give couples one. And uh, learn some interesting things. And I'll tell you that I don't want to spend too awful much time. We're going to spend probably a few weeks talking about Islam, but I don't think it's really beneficial to spend a long time on on other religions. Whenever I was in in school. And we was talking about demonology. I, I I thought that was something I really wanted to learn a lot about. And the professor said, I don't want to spend a lot of time here because he said it ain't edifying uh, to us spiritually. And last time we taught on comparative religions was on Tuesday nights in the New Fellowship Hall. And we I think we all got to the same opinion. We was tired of hearing about other religions and we wanted to hear some Bible. So there will come a point when we'll get uh, tired of hearing about other religions and and uh, we'll switch back to something something better. All right, I have some of these highlighted I want to go over with you, and you might be thinking, well, that's kind of boring going over some definitions. Well, if we don't know what some of these words means, then some of the other things I'm going to say ain't going to make no sense. And so I want us to have a basic understanding of a few words, and I'm sure you already know number three, Allah, is the Arabic word for God. It is often used as the name for God in Islam, which that definition 
if you're wondering why they word it that way, because Allah is not definitively only the God of Islam. Allah, that name Allah existed before Islam religion was ever created, which is interesting. Let's skip on down to number 11. This is one of those I don't know really how to pronounce. I'm going to say Hadith. The sayings and deeds that the Prophet Muhammad recorded by his followers, they're considered authoritative and perfect. A saying in this Hadith is called a, a Sunnah, S-U-N-N-A-H. And uh, so this lets us know we've all heard of the Quran most, most likely, but this is another book that they use, uh, and these are the writings and, and stuff of, of, not writings, but these are the sayings and deeds of the Prophet Muhammad. And uh, we're going to mention that here in a little while too. This, this uh, hiyar is a black stone set in the corner of Kaaba in Mecca. The tradition states that it fell from heaven. That is number 12. Uh, and this Hajj, Hajjah, maybe, his Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca, which takes place the last month of the Islamic calendar, one of the five pillars of Islam. And if you're wondering already, I'm sure you are, what the five pillars of Islam, that's going to be the very next thing that we talk about is the five pillars of Islam. And uh, number 18, the Iblis, or Iblis is Satan, a fallen jinn. And uh, let's skip right on down from 18 to 24. We're going to go back up. But because it said a fallen jinn, let's see what a jinn is. A jinn is a supernatural, invisible race of beings below angels. They were made from fire and are capable of looking like humans or animals. Some may dwell in rocks, trees, etc., and may possess black dogs and black cats. They are good and bad jinn, and all will be judged on the judgment day. Okay, now we got close to that. Uh, the next to the last sentence, it said, Some may dwell in rocks, trees, and may possess black dogs and black cats. Uh, what does that sound like to you? Superstition. Yeah, superstition. You know, uh, the old superstition says that if a black cat goes across your path, that you need to back up and go the other way, find a different way to go. You know, if you go under the ladder, you're going to have bad luck. You break the mirror. I, I'm, I'm beginning to believe from the studies that the Islamic religion is a superstitious religion. And uh, we, you may see that through some of the things. And number 20, in Jill, the inspired sayings of Jesus, the message of Jesus. Well, hold on, we're studying Islam. Why, why are they talking about Jesus? What else was they going to do? They had to do something. He was raising the dead. He was speaking things and people were showing up and being transformed by the multitudes. They had to have an answer for him, so they had to put him in the book. But I've read for the last couple of years from cover to cover in the Bible, and I ain't found nothing about Muhammad. Anybody else? I don't think he's a prophet of what we study. And again, our God and their God is not the same one. No. False prophet. Number 21, Islam. Now, you may be like me when I first started this. I'd scratch my head. I wouldn't let nobody know I didn't know this. And, and y'all may all know this. But I always wonder, why is there so many names for the same thing? One day they call it Islam. The next day they call it Muslim. Well, what's the deal? I couldn't figure out what the deal was. Well, here's the deal. The religion is Islam. The follower is a Muslim. It may be that simple, and maybe you already knew that. But if you didn't, there's the answer to that, and you can mark that down. Uh, so the, the religion is Islam. You've heard the state of Islam. Islam's a religion. A Muslim is a follower. And so that'll help you out. Uh, Jannah is a heavenly garden paradise, the place of the faithful in the afterlife. Jihad. We know what that is? Striving is a definition they try to give out. Fighting against one's own self-will, 
also a physical fight for the truth of Islam, not allowing anyone to steal the ability to worship. It can also mean holy war. Most of the most recent stuff that we've heard about jihad is that definition right there, a holy war has, has been declared. And we went through 24, let's go down to 26, Kaaba, uh, a cube-shaped building in Mecca containing a stone laid there by Abraham, Abraham and Ishmael. All Muslims face this cube when praying. We, we're, our initial talk, while I'm using this, this notebook that I have notes in, we're going to be talking about what, what Islam believes and, and what they would say if they were trying to convert us to Islam. That would be kind of how we're going to approach the first part. When we switch over, though, to this book, we're going to be talking about the, the, the false things in their religion. And uh, does anybody else hear that beeping? I think we got a power amp beeping in the back or something. Anyway, and so the Quran, number 27, also spelled Q-U-R-A-N, the holy book of Islam given to Muhammad by Allah through the archangel Gabriel. Quran literally means the recital. It is the final revelation of Allah given to the prophet Muhammad. It has a hundred... It has 114 sur surahs or chapters. Uh, number 32, Mecca is the holy city of Islam. It is the birthplace of Muhammad. Medina is a city that uh, Yarthrub, that Muhammad fled to after announcing Islam. A mosque, we probably know what that is, a Muslim house of worship. Uh, Muhammad, the final messenger, prophet of God, whose message... Uh, abrogated all previous revelations. He received the Quran through the angel Gabriel over a 23 year period. And then Muslim, I done gave you the definition of that. Ramadan, uh, you probably heard that. It's the ninth month of the Islamic calendar, which is the month of fast. Now, I know you've heard these next terms. Shiites, a sect of Islam that teaches that leaders should be political rulers. Uh... A Sufi is a sect of Islam, and it is a very mystical and teaches strong self-denial with the hope of a union with God. A Sunnah is the life practice of saying that Muhammad recorded examples of perfect conduct in society, uh, religion, action, etc. They contain, they're contained in the Hadith. Sunnah is a sect of Islam, and a Surah is a chapter in the Quran. Now, I had to get through all of that, and this is the reason why, because we're going to be talking about some stuff here in a little while, and if I didn't give these definitions, we'd be scratching our head wondering what I was really talking about, and may still do that a little bit, because I'm sure we didn't. Uh, so uh, let's do something a little fun. If you're, if you're not licensed with the Assemblies of God uh, or a preacher, you can answer this next question. Because we're going to talk about the five pillars of Islam. Uh, does anybody in here know the four cardinal, cardinal doctrines of the Assemblies of God? Anybody want to shoot a hand up and, and, and just let them fly? Y'all heard that, right? Nobody raised their hand. Anybody just want to give it a try? Anybody know one? Brother Doug. Yeah, four do the four doctrinal, the four cardinal doctrines of the assemblies of God, and these four are in the sixteen fundamental truths. Must be born again is one. That's not one of the cardinal ones. That's one of the cardinal ones. There, she's like, are you licensed through the assemblies of God? Number three, anybody? Baptism in the Holy Spirit, and number four. What are we waiting for? The rapture. I'll guarantee you. And this is not a poke in the eye because unless I had them wrote down, I might not be able to remember them either. This is not a poke. This is just the truth of the matter. 
I guarantee you if we asked a Muslim what the five pillars of Islam is, they could tell you. They could tell you. They are serious about what they're doing and deadly serious. I mean, uh, they, they believe what they believe. They're sold out. They're, they're, there's some stuff that they do that's just, it's almost remarkable in a weird way that, that they pray five times a day. And, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. The five pillars of Islam are the core beliefs that shape Muslim thought, deed, and society. And that's important. We're going to talk a lot about society because it kind of reverses. Really, when we get to the end of this, we're going to see that society dictated Islam instead of Islam dictating society. In the end, we'll find out that, that most of what come into Islam came out of the, the Arabian culture the Arabic culture, that they were already living like that before there was ever a revelation from Allah. Uh, and and that'll, that, that may be more interesting a little bit later. A Muslim who fulfills the five pillars of Islam remains in the faith of Islam and sincerely repents of his sins will make it to Jannah, which is paradise. If he performs the five pillars but does not remain in the faith, he will not be saved. Number one, Shahadadah. Shahadadah is an Islamic proclamation that there is no true God except Allah and Muhammad is, his mess, is the messenger of Allah. Now there will be some little bit differences and variations of that, but if you're around them very long and you hear them speak or pray, you're going to hear this declaration. There is only one God and His name is Allah and His prophet is Muhammad. Many, many times they say this over and over again. And uh, this is the confession that uh, Allah is the one true God and Muhammad is the greatest prophet of Allah. Now, that's not to say they, they'll tell you that Jesus is a prophet, but he's not of the caliber of Muhammad is. Which just... I mean, they wouldn't even have mentioned Jesus had he not been so awesome. If they could have explained him away, I feel like they would have, but they couldn't. And then they're trying to convince us that Muhammad is a greater prophet than Jesus was. Yet we do not read at, at, at any point where, well, for one thing, Muhammad didn't die on a cross for us. That he never raised the dead as far as I've seen in any of their teachings or uh, anything else. Let's go to number two. Right, if you're writing these down, number one, the five pillars of Islam, the first one was Shada, Shahada, which is S-H-A-H-A-D-A. -A -A. So if you're taking notes, the first pillar is S-H-A-H-A-D-A. -A -A. And this is the proclamation that there is no true God except Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger of Allah. Number two is prayer, and their word for that is Salat, S-A-L-A-T. Prayer involves a confession of sins which begins with purification of the body and ends with purification of the soul. Prayer is performed five times a day. The first prayer, uh, are y'all listening? I know it'd be easy if you ain't interested to get lost in this, but their first prayer happens at dawn. When the sun comes up, the Muslims on their knees. And the last is at sunset. I missed my sentence there. And the last is at sunset. But actually what I read just a little bit ago was is they have one more. The number four is at sunset and there's another one that happens a little bit past sunset. The names of the prayers are Fajar. Ooh, these are some good ones. We'll skip those names. First one is at sunset. The, the, the fourth one prayer is set at sunset. The first one is at Don, yes, thank you. And uh, the last one's at sunset, but there's another one. I already said that. Number three, fasting, or uh, S-A-U-M. The month of R R Ramadan is the month of fasting in Islam. It is an act of worship where the faithful follower denies his own needs, seeks Allah. Usually this fasting entails no drinking, eating, uh, sexual relations during daylight hours, 
for an entire month of, of Ramadan. We've heard that term. Uh, you hear it all the time on the news. I mean, uh, during this time, you hear about that. And I'll tell you what you're going to see. And, and I was talking to Brother Sam before uh, we got started tonight. It'd be easy for us as we go through here to think, that's crazy. That's, that's just ignorant. That, I, that don't make no sense at all. Why would they believe that stuff? Well, I'm going to tell you something. Before you as a believer in Jesus Christ and accept Him as your Lord and Savior, a lot of the stuff that we do, you thought was nonsense. It's hard for you to believe. And and really, to the non-believer, it seems ridiculous. And, and if you need me to put the word on that, the, the Bible says that it's foolishness to the unbeliever. The gospel of Jesus Christ is foolishness to the unbeliever. The things of God are at enmity with the carnal man. They are foolish to the, to the unbeliever does not understand why you would go around being hungry if you got food in the fridge. They don't understand when you got insurance why you go get prayer instead of going to the doctor. Amen? But we believe those things with all of our heart. You know? That one of them was our cardinal truth. Divine healing. We believe in divine healing. And, and, and so that could seem like foolishness. Now what am I trying to say? This is it. What I'm trying to say is, is don't dismiss. I mean, I don't agree with their religion either. But, but if you're going to try to win a, a Muslim to the Lord and you go to talking about their religion like it's dirt, well, it's been passed down from their great-grandparents to their grandparents. It's been passed down from their grandparents to their parents and from their parents to them. It's something they love, respect, and honor. And so if your first word is your idiotic religion is going to send you to hell, you've closed the door to minister to this person. And so our hopes is with some of this teaching is, is that you can speak intelligible to a, a Muslim person. And when you show them that you know a little bit about what they, what they believe and what they do, it might open a doorway for you to show them some of the stuff that you believe in that you do. And, and, and uh, so, number three, did you get that? Yes, uh, Ramadan. Number four, alms, giving, or charity, and that's spelt Z A K. Z-A-K-A-T. Uh, this is about charity or giving to the poor. It benefits the poor and helps the giver by moving him towards more holiness and submission to Allah. Number five is a hajjah, H-A-J-J, which is a pilgrimage. Uh, this is a pilgrimage to Mecca. All Muslims, if they are able, are to make a pilgrimage to Mecca. It involves financial sacrifice and is an act of worship. Muslims must make the pilgrimage the first half of the last month of the lunar year. So they have to travel to Mecca sometime in their life. Well, that ain't bad if you live next door to it. But if you live in the U.S. and you believe that you got to fulfill and, and you ain't making all that big bucks and you believe the only way you're going to get to heaven is this is a huge burden upon the people is, is what I'm trying to say to make this pilgrimage to go to, to Mecca and uh, of course we know that it's false and, and they're not going to receive anything out of that uh, what are the doctrines of Islam well some of these are going to be a little repetitive there is only one God and, and I pulled these things up off of a, a great resource that I use I'll give that to you it is uh, K-A-R-M, Christians Apologetic and Research Ministry. Uh, you can find it on the internet. You can look up religion. You can hover over the scriptures. The scriptures will pop right up in there for you. But right here in these, this that I have down, it has references to the Quran. And so everything that I'm looking at up here is, is wording, and then it's references to the Quran. And... Uh, um, I want to get down here salvation and judgment Allah will judge all people on the day of judgment which we believe in a judgment too number two if your good deeds exceed your bad deeds you believe in Allah and sincerely repent of your sins you may go to heaven <laughs> you may go to heaven if your good deeds exceed, exceed your bad deeds 
and you believe in Allah and sincerely repent of your sins, you may go to heaven. And it's got scriptural references that I can give you, not to the Bible, but to the Quran. Wow. If I do all this, I got a chance of going? I might make it? Man. If your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, I don't know about some of us. Some days, that's a, that might just be a flip of a coin. Amen? Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to Him and repent. He'll wash us and make us white as snow. I don't see no promises like this in what I'm studying about the Quran. Number three, they believe that there is an eternal hell for those that are not Muslims, not practicing Islam, and not of the true faith. Well, we kind of expected they believe that, you know. We believe that there's a hell waiting for those that have not received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Number four, hell is a place of unlimited capacity, eternal torment, fire with boiling water, and where the skin is burned and renewed for unbelievers and jinn. Remember we talked about those earlier? And I'm just thinking that that might be the very word where they got genie from. Like you remember when, I'm, when I, we get in this book, it's going to talk about the, uh, the story of Arabian Nights. Remember, remember that book and the, the genie and the lamp and, and all that stuff? Well, they bring that superstition into their religion. Well, they were trying to grow a religion. So what are you going to do? you got to do something to get the pagans to come in. There is a tree in hell named the tree of Zac Zacuum for which bad fruit is given and the damned are forced to eat. Number six, heaven, paradise, a garden of bliss and fruit has rivers and has with maidens pure and holy and the carpets and cushions. And I think there's a lot more to it than that, but that's all they had written down here. Number seven, there will be a physical resurrection of all the people on the day of judgment. Judgment is based on a person's sincere repentance uh, and righteous deeds. They believe there's an afterlife like we do. You see what I'm saying? A lot of what they believe lines up with what we believe. They believe in an afterlife like we do. They believe that there's going to be a judgment like I do. So it's getting easier to say, well, we got a lot in common. Maybe we do serve the same God. No, we're going to come to some deal breakers here in a little while. Uh, of, You know, we might receive Allah to be our God and they'd be all right with that, but they ain't ever receiving the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost to be Allah. It ain't happening. It's not going to happen. Why? Because their first plea is there's one God and His name is Allah. And He's not the Holy Spirit and Jesus and the Father. He's Allah. And so they would have to make a total turnaround. Uh, number six here says, Jesus was a great prophet, but not the Son of God. He is not divine and was not crucified. Did the red flag go up there? We got a problem. That's the cornerstone. That's the chief cornerstone of what we believe. Muhammad is Allah's greatest and last prophet. And his message supersedes all other past prophets, including Jesus. Oh! That's convenient. He's the last one, so he gets the last say, and that makes him right. You can't lose in a proposition like that. When you're the last, what is the old saying? Uh, uh, Brother Arnold always says, first liar don't stand chance. It's the, it's the last guy that, that always gets to tell the biggest and the best one. And the, and, the, and the last guy, Muhammad, in creating his religion, I'm telling you, when we move to the book, you, you're probably going to jaw drop on some of the things that this guy pulled. And probably if you discuss the things in this book, with one of them, <laughs> they might declare jihad on you. Because <laughs> they're not going to be happy. And uh, so, the Quran is Allah's word. and He literally spoke it to Gabriel from Muhammad. Uh, number nine, there, 
there are other holy writings, but they are superseded by the Quran. Uh, the other works are, they believe in the Torah, the first five books of Moses, but the Quran supersedes that. They believe in Injil, I-N-G, or I'm sorry, I-N-J-E-E-L, the message that Jesus gave, written down, but no longer exists. The writings have been altered by scholars. Whatever agrees with the Quran is true. What? It's either, Brother Doug, it's either true or it's not. And so, they're going to say that they believe that the writings of Jesus Christ might have been handled by man too much and wait till we look at the writings of Muhammad. Uh, number three, Z-A-B-O-O-R, the Psalms. And so, these are other works, along with the Hadith that we talked about, which were the, the writings and the, and the sayings of, of Muhammad. Um, drinking alcohol is forbidden. Gambling is forbidden. Man is made of the dust of the earth. There is no last minute repentance. So if you didn't do right, don't call the priest in at the last minute and hope to make it to, to uh, Muslim heaven because you ain't, it ain't going to happen. For one thing, you'd have to get up and make it to Mecca, from what I understand, before you could go. Uh, I have some stuff over here. If the Quran is true, then Islam is false. Uh, if the Quran is true, then Islam is false. Why? Because the Quran says to trust the Gospels, but the four Gospels contradict the Quran. This means the Quran can't be true if it says the Gospel message is true also. In order to show this, we're going to look at some verses. Uh, it says, None can change um, Allah's Word. Number one here, and it says, Rejected were the messengers before thee with patience and constancy. They bore their rejection and their wrongs until our aid did reach them. There is none that can alter the words of the decrees of Allah. Already thou hast received some account of these messengers. Now here's another one from the Quran. The word of the Lord doth find its fulfillment in truth and justice. None can change his words, for he is one from heaven that knoweth all. And uh, then we go, to, Moses was given the Torah, and it goes down uh, talking about that. David was given the Psalms, and it says, We have sent the, the inspiration, and we have sent it to Noah and the messengers, messengers after him. We sent inspiration to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, to Jesus, Job, and Jonah. Uh, it just goes on. To show the faults of of uh, uh, this. All right, I have a comparison here between Christianity and Islamic doctrine. Christianity: Christians will be with the Lord in heaven in our resurrection bodies. Non-Christians will be cast into hell forever. Islam says there's an afterlife experience as either an ideal life in paradise for faithful Muslims. Or hell for those who are not. So we're pretty much, it's pretty close to the same thing. Angels are created non-human, some of which fell to sin and became evil. They were very powerful. The unfallen angels carry out the will of God to sacrifice a Christ on the cross. Or I'm sorry, I've I read into something else. Uh, Islam says it created beings without free will that serve God. Angels were created from light. Now we could get into a, a big theological debate there about angels, uh, whether they had free will or not. And I, I don't want to get uh, an open air discussion started anyway about that. But here's the deal. They had to have some kind of will because they decided to follow Satan. And so uh, I don't understand everything about that uh, but I understand that they had to have some kind of will to de determine not to follow uh, follow the Lord atonement, the sacrifice of Christ on the cross whereby the blood becomes the sacrifice that turns away the wrath of God 
from the sinner and receives by faith the work of Christ on the cross. That's the atonement for Christians. There is no atonement for the work of Islam other than sincere confession of sin and repentance of the sinner. The devil in Christianity is a fallen angel who opposes God. In, in Islam, it's a fallen jinn. Jinns are not angels nor men, but created things with free wills. We've done talked about that. And I really, really believe that in further study, I'll find out that these are actually genies and, and that they were trying to bring a pagan group of people into the Muslim religion. God, God is a trinity of three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The trinity is not three gods, but one God, nor is it one person who took three forms. Trinitarianism is strictly monotheistic. There is no other God in existence. That's what Christians believe. God is known as Allah in Islam, is one person, strict unity. There is no other God in existence. He's the creator of the universe and sovereign over all. The Holy Spirit, you're going to like this. The, whole, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, is fully God in nature. That's what Christians believe. Islam believes that the Holy Spirit, now get this, is the Archangel Gabriel who delivered the words of the Quran to Muhammad. When I read that, I thought that don't make no sense. How could he be the Holy Spirit and be the Archangel Gabriel too? And what we're going to see is, is again and again that they had to make an answer for what the Word of God said, what God had passed down. They had to have an answer for that. And it has, it has shaped the way that Muhammad's writings and his things and the whole Quran. Think about it. This, the Bible was written by how many authors? Anybody know? 66, I, I believe is the number. 66 men. Is that right? 66? 66 books. Too many talking at once. Just one of you. So, so who's, who's giving me the answer? There's 66 books. I forget. Uh, huh? That's right. So I, I don't really remember. Uh, but, and we'll look at this. Where did, where did the Quran come from? It come from the revelation that was given to Muhammad and who else? All right, now let's step out of out of Islam for a minute, and let's go to Mormonism. Mormonism was get, they have a book too. Y'all know that one, the Book of Mormon. You know who it was given to? John Smith. Do you know? Do you know this? And we'll talk about this. I kind of this is the if you like if you like Twinkies, this is the cream filling in the Twinkie here. <laughs> Let me just share this story because and then we'll end with this. Uh, this is the story. There was an angel named Moroni. Which every time I read this story, brother Doug, when I think about an angel named Moroni, I'm thinking he's a Moroni. Well, I, I just thought, well, isn't that ironic that those names are so close? But the angel's name was Moroni. Guess what? Uh, jo John Smith's dad uh, was a treasure hunter. Now, this is why they don't like to talk about John Smith a lot nowadays. His dad was a treasure hunter, and they sought treasure, and they used these things called peep stones. And these peep stones, they'd look through these stones and they'd look at mountains and supposedly it would show them whether there was gold or not in these mountains. Okay. Well, whenever John Smith was looking through a peep stone, he was shown these uh, golden uh, scrolls. And these angel named Moroni come down and translated these scrolls to John Smith. And he wrote the Book of, of Mormon. But doggone it, guess what happened? Right after they got through, the angel took the scrolls and took them back up to heaven. No evidence. Well, if it wasn't enough that, that John Smith's dad 
was a, a, a treasure hunter that used peep stones and taught John how to do that. His mama was a fortune teller. And so revelation come from one man about this. Now, it ain't that I don't believe that it could happen just, just like that. But, but look how many men God spoke to that come with the same revelation. Look in the Old Testament alone at how much prophecy was placed there of a Messiah that was coming one day. And look at how many in the New Testament, how many of those prophecies that Jesus fulfilled whenever He lived His life and He walked. There's places in the New Testament when Jesus walked a certain way for no other reason than because it thus said in the, in the, in the Word of God. Amen. It says in, in the New Testament, it said He must go this way because the Word said that He would walk through this place. Wow. All of these men were inspired by one God, by His Holy Spirit. They got the same revelation. It comes to the same truth. It's coming to the same end. It's going to be the same Lord that steps out on the cloud. And they're going to blow a trumpet and they're going to come get us. And folks, it's our job until He comes to help people that's been deceived by things like Islam. Hey, I know. <laughs> I, I, I know Wednesday night you're, you're tired and, and I, I may have to jazz it up a little bit. I can tell. But, but we had to do some definitions and some stuff. We're going to talk about some, some fallacies next week. And um, I want you to be able to. This guy, some of his uh, uh, interviews in here will be on the street with actual Muslims that he talked to. He speaks to, and one point, and I'll just give you this and we'll close in prayer. He speaks to a Muslim taxi cab driver and asks him about the thought of Allah. Is it, is it possible that he was a predated God? And he said, oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. He said, that's very well known. And so, I, when I read this, I was just blown away. What do you mean? What do you mean? Well, Allah was a moon god ever before he was an Islam God. Now, think on that until we come back next week. Before he was ever an Islam's God, he was a moon God that was married to the sun God and had three daughters. And, and the more that I read, the more I become aware that I'm persuaded that there are uh, many Muslims that knows what they believe, but I'm also persuaded that there's many Muslims that just knows a little bit about what they believe. And if they knew the whole story, they would be scratching their heads saying, that don't add up. That don't sound right. And you're going to see that. And when we talk about Mormonism, you're going to say, that don't add up. That don't add up. When we talk about another religion, you're going to see how that they initially believed that only 144,000 people would be saved altogether off planet Earth. Well, when the population grow, guess what happened to their number? That ain't going to work. When their church growed over 144,000 people in it, guess what happened? They had to rewrite their doctrine and rethink their thinking. Why? Because... <laughs> Are you going to stand at the door and tell them we got 144,000, the rest of y'all can't be saved? Won't, it won't work. And we're going, to, we're going to do a lot of interesting stuff just as long as Brother Arnold can bear with the not preaching on Wednesday nights. <laughs> Amen. So let's stand together tonight. I hope that, that you receive something. I'm going to maybe try to give y'all some handouts, try to take notes. Uh, as much as you can. That way you're writing down what you want to remember instead of me handing you a bunch of paper that gets trashed. And Hey, don't forget, if you got a question, write it down, text me, email me, something, hand it to me in the hall, and we'll work on it, try to get to it the next week. Father, we come to you tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray again for every sick person that's name that was called out tonight. Lord, we pray, God, for everybody that's present, Lord, that you would help us, God, to understand and receive, God, what we're being taught. God, that we'll, that we'll be good witnesses, Lord, that we would 
be able to show others, Lord, what we've learned and, and show maybe the error of, the, of their thinking, Lord. I pray, God, tonight, give us your Holy Spirit, Lord. Give us boldness and wisdom and knowledge, Lord. Fill us with courage, God, so that we can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.